Hi there, it's Saturday, March 30th, and time for day 90 of our Through the Bible in 365 days, or one year. Let's jump over there. Change this, and we'll get to it. We're in Judges 3 to 5 today. <clears throat> now remember, it's been years and years, okay? And Joshua finally died. They're at peace, and I think they're in the generation after the wars, and so not because they're starting to follow other gods and do everything God said they would. Bad things. So, <clears throat> okay. These are the nations that the Lord left in the land to test those Israelites who had not experienced the wars of Canaan. Okay. He did this to teach warfare to generations of Israelites who had no experience in battle. <clears throat> These are the nations, the Philistines. These are the ones they're fighting against, right? Those living under the five Philistine rulers, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites living in the mountains of Lebanon, of Mount Baal, Hermon, and Lebo Hamath. These people were left to test the Israelites to see whether they would obey the commands the Lord had given there to their ancestors through Moses. <clears throat> right? Just a test. So the people of Israel lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pizzites, Hebites, and Jebusites, and they intermarried with them. Wrong. Israelite sons married their daughters. Wrong. And Israelite daughters are given in marriage to their sons. Wrong. <laughs> and the Israelites served their gods. Big wrong, right? Othniel becomes Israel's judge. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They forgot about the Lord their God, and they served the images of Baal and Asherah poles. He said specifically not to build those poles. Remember that? The columns, they called it. Then the Lord burned with anger against Israel, and he turned them over to King Cushan. Yeah, those guys. And the Israelites served them for eight years. But when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help, the Lord raised up a rescuer to save them. His name was Nachmiel, the son of Caleb's younger brother, Kenaz. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he became Israel's judge. He went to war against King Cush and Rishath, that guy of Aram, and the Lord gave Othniel victory over him. So there was peace in the land for 40 years. 40 years, that's a whole generation, right? Then Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. Oh, just that quick. Hmm. Once again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. I mean, they just never stop, do they? And the Lord gave King Eglon of Moab control over Israel because of their evil. Eglon enlisted the Amorites and Amakites as allies, and then he went out and defeated Israel, taking possession of Jericho, the city of Palms. And the Israelites served Egon and Moab for 18 years. Huh. You'd think they would learn. Huh. But when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord again raised up a rescuer to save them. His name was Ehud, son of Gera, a left-handed man of the tribe of Benjamin. Left-handed, they say. Huh. <coughs> The Israelites sent Ehud to deliver the to deliver the tribute money to the king Elab of Moab. So Ehud made a double-edged dagger that was about a foot long, and he strapped it to his right thigh, keeping it hidden under his clothing. He brought the tribute money to the Elgon, who was very fat. <laughs> After delivering the payment, Ehud started home with those who would who would help carry the tribute. But Ehud reached the stone. But when Ehud reached the stone idols near Gilgal, he turned back and came to Elgon and said, I have a secret message for you. So the king commanded his servants, be quiet. And he sent them all out of the room. <laughs> Ehud walked over to Elgon, who was sitting alone in the cool upstairs room. And he said, I have a message from God for you. As Elgon rose, to, from his, rose from his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand, pulled out the dagger, strapped to his right throat, and plunged it in the king's belly. The dagger went so deep that the handle disappeared beneath the king's fat. So Ehud did not pull out the dagger, and the king's bowels emptied. Then Ehud closed, closed and locked the doors of the room and escaped down the, down the latrine, <laughs> down the toilet chute. That's nasty, okay? That is nasty. Remember the little castles? The latrines were built in on the outside of the castle, and the pipes went down the outside, and they would, you know, sit in a hole and down, and he would escape down that pipe, okay? That that boy needed a bath, I'll tell you what. After Ehud was gone, the king's servants returned and found the doors to the upstairs room locked. 
They thought he might be using a latrine in the room, so they waited. But when the king didn't come out after a long delay, they became concerned and got a key. Then they opened the doors and found that their master then found their master dead on the floor. While the servants were waiting, Ehud escaped, passing the stone idols on his way to Sariah. When he arrived in the hill country of Ephraim, Ehud, Ehud sounded a call to arms. Then he led a band of Israelites down from the hills. Follow me, he said, for the Lord has given you victory over the Moab, your enemy. So they followed him, and, Israel, and the Israelites took control of the shallow crossings of the Jordan River across the Moab, preventing anyone from crossing. They attacked the Moabites and killed about 10,000 of their strongest and most able-bodied warriors, and none of them escaped. So Moab was conquered by Israel that day. There was peace in the land for 80 years. It's kind of 40 and 80, 120. So like every, every 40 to 80 years... They do stupid stuff and help to cry back to the Lord again. <laughs> Shamgar becomes Israel's judge. After Ehud, Shamgar, the son of Anath, rescued Israel. He, he once killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad. Ox goad. Shall we look that up? What is an ox goad? An ox goad is a wooden tool approximately 18 feet long fitted with an iron spike. Or point at one end. Wow. Hey! Huh. At one end, which was used to spur oxen as they pulled or plowed the cart. Wow. So it was like an 18 foot spear. That's long. It's hard to handle that thing. After Ehud's death, the Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. How do you like that? So the Lord turned them over to King Jab of Hazar, and the, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in that place. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, <laughs> ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help once again. Deborah, the wife of Lepidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at the time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she went. One day she sent for Barak, son of Abinim, Abinoam, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Nepali. She said to him, This is what the Lord, God, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Nepali and Jebulun on Mount Tabor. And when I call out Caesarea, and when I call out Caesarea, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors, to the Kishon River, there I will give you victory over them. And so the Lord told the prophet. Okay? Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. <laughs> Very well, she replied, I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak Kadesh, and Kadesh Barak called together the tribes of Zebulon and Naphtali, and 10,000 warriors went up with him. Deborah, <coughs> Deborah also went with him. Now, Heber the Kenite, a descendant of Moses' brother-in-law, <coughs> Hobab, had moved away from the other members of his tribe and pitched his tent by the oak of this, wow, Zaninininim near Kadesh. Easy for me to say, huh? <laughs> when Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abagolam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, he called for 900 of his iron chariots and all of his warriors, and they marched from, wow, Herosheth Hogoyagim into the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to, to Barak, Get ready, this is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leaped down from his chariot and escaped on foot. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy all the way to Harosheth, Sheth Paguyim, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one was left alive. Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because Heber's family was on friendly terms with King Jabin of Hosher. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come into my tent, sir. Come in. Don't be afraid. So he went into her tent, and she covered him with the blanket. Hide me. Hide me. Please give me some water, said. I am thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anybody comes and asks if there is anyone here, say no. But when Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, Jael quietly crept up to him with a hammer and a tent peg in her hand. Wow. Then she drove the tent peg through his temple into the ground, so he died. Wow. 
Jail. Is this J.O.? Is that who's that? Man, she was a spy, wasn't she? That's pretty, um... Now, tent pegs are like this long, and he was asleep, so he drove it through his temple, all the way through his brain, out the other side, and into the ground. Wow. When Barat came looking for Cesare, Jay went out to meet him. She said, come in and I will show you the man you were looking for. So he followed her into the tent and found Cesare lying there dead with the tent peg through his temple. <laughs> so on that day, Israel saw God defeat Jabin, the Canaanite king. And from, the time on, and from that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger against King Jabin until they finally destroyed him. There you go. Now, the song of Deborah. Look how long this song is. Holy mackerel. Well, we're going to read the song. And remember, Deborah said, you won't get credit if I go with you to these battles. And he said, I don't care. So there you go. The song of Deborah. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang this song. Israel's leaders took charge, and the people gladly followed. Praise the Lord. Listen, you kings, pay attention, you mighty rulers, for I will sing, and sing to the Lord. I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you set out from Seir and marched across the fields of Edom, the earth trembled and the, cloudy, and the cloudy skies poured down rain. The mountains quaked in the presence of the Lord, the God of Mount Sinai, in the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Benath, in the days of Jael, people avoided the main roads and travelers stayed on winding pathways. There were, a few there were a few people left in the villages of Israel until Deborah arose as mother up for Israel. When Israel chose new gods, war erupted at the city gates. Yet not a shield or spear could be seen among 40,000 warriors in Israel. My heart is with the commander of Israel, with those who volunteered for war, praise the Lord. Consider this, you who ride on fine donkeys, you who sit on fancy saddle blankets, and you who walk along the road, listen to the village musicians scattered at the watering holes. They recount, the vic they recount the righteous victories of the Lord and the victories of his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord marched down to the city gates. Wake up, Deborah, wake up, wake up, wake up, and sing a song. Arise, Barak, lead your captives away, son of Abinoam. Down from Tabor marched with a few, marched a few against the nobles. The people of the Lord marched down against the mighty warriors that came, that came down from Ephraim, a land that once belonged to the Amalekites. They followed you, Benjamin, with your troops from Maker, and the commanders marched down from Zebuim came those who carry the com a commander's staff. The princess, the, the the princes of Eshikar were with Deborah and Barak, and they followed Barak, rushing to the valley. But the but in the tribe of Reuben there was great indecision. Why did you sit at home among the sheepfolds to hear the shepherds whistle for their flocks? Yes, the tri yes in the tribe of Reuben there was great indecision. Gilead remained east of the Jordan, and why did Dan stay home? Asher sat unmoved at the seashore, remaining at his harbors. But Zebulon risks his life, as did Nepali, at the, on the heights of the battlefield. The king of Canaan came and fought at Tenak near the Megiddo Springs, but they carried off no silver treasures. The stars, the stars fought from heaven, and the stars in their orbits fought against Sisera. The Kishon River swept them away. The ancient torrent of Kishon marched on with courage, my soul. Then horses' hooves hammered the ground, and galloping, <coughs> galloping of Sisera's mighty deeds. Then the people of Meraz be cursed, and the angel of the Lord let them be utterly cursed. Because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty warriors. The most blessed among women is Jael, the wife of Hebner, the Kenite. May she be blessed above all women who live in tents. Sisera asked for water. She gave him milk in a bowl fit for nobles. She brought him yogurt. <clears throat> Then with her left hand she reached for a tent peg, and with her right hand a workman's hammer. She struck Cesare with the hammer, crushing his head with a shattering blow. She pierced his temples. He sank, he fell, he lay still at her feet. And, and where he sank, there he died. <laughs> From the window Cesare's mother looked out. Through the window she watched for his return, saying, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why don't we hear the sound of chariot wheels? Her wise women answer. She repeats the words to herself. They must be dividing the captured plunder, where the woman said, for every man. For 
a woman or two, with a woman or two for every man. There will be a colorful robes for Cicera and colorful embroidered robes for me. Yes, the plunder will include colorful robes embroidered on both sides. <laughs> so they think, huh? Lord, may all your enemies die like Cicera. May all those who love, who love you rise like the sun in all its power. Then there was peace in the land for 40 years. So in this one chapter, you have 40 years and 80 years and more years and 40 years. So the hundred, say like 200 years passed just in this one chapter. So they're like moving along pretty quickly, right? Well, that was actually interesting, wasn't it? It's also weird stuff and, you know, they're good for, they're good for eight or 16 or 18 years and then they do something stupid and then they have to go back to the Lord and then they do something stupid and then they have to go back to the Lord. It seems like every time they get a new generation, the parents aren't teaching the kids what the kids need to learn, right? With a rod if necessary. So that was interesting. <clears throat> now we take a peek ahead here. Judges six and seven, only two chapters. Gideon becomes Israel's judge. We've heard of Gideon, right? Gideon asks for a sign. Gideon defeats the Midianites. We've heard of all these. Okay, so there you have it. That is <clears throat> that's to the Bible in one year, day ninety. So judges, and we're moving along. Catch up on any of these you may have missed. You want to be you want to be able to say you read through the whole Bible in a year. Hmm? been a long time since I've done this you know probably 30 or 40 years you know so much a lot of it I don't remember you know when you get old you forget stuff so but yeah there you have it <clears throat> that's it for today give us a like if you think about it check out the proverb studies we do every day but until next time keep studying see ya